Uh, how was you? Catch some shut eye. I'll go on flapping my tongue. I've got a long voyage ahead. Sleep's not what I need. Someone I can actually communicate with. That's what I want. Greetings, Geralt. Remember me? I remember. We met in White Orchard. You're... Gaunter Odin. Known also as Master Mirror. I helped you find your Yennefer. We meet again. And it seems you need my help again. Heard a noose awaits you. That is, if this slot doesn't kill you first. Haven't tried it yet. Mm. Doesn't look promising. Not unlike your situation. I could try to extract you from here, you know. Because you do wish to disembark, do you not? Yeah, sure. But what on earth could you? Oh, more than you'd ever expect. I shall help you, Geralt. But before I do, I must know you'll return the favor. Right. Can't possibly get something for nothing. Indeed. When all's said and done, I am a merchant. So, do you want my help? Yes. It's a deal. Once it's all over, we shall meet at midnight at the crossroads, neath the willows near the village of Yantra. Ah, and I must give you something to remember me by. What's that? A mark to show we're associates. The other drop. We could do nothing. We deliver lie, this one. Apart from all else. The hell the king is sure to condemn him to. I wish to see. What kind of hell? Carring, slaying, and quartering. This is for regicide and tales. Dr. Mythos here with another episode of Myths Beyond the Games. Today we are exploring the sinister character of Gauter Odim from The Witcher 3. Last episode we touched upon Lovecraftian influences in The Witcher 3 DLC, Hearts of Stone, and today we will be expanding upon those influences further in the character of Gauter Odim, aka the Merchant of Mirrors, or the Man of Glass. The first story DLC expansion for The Witcher 3 brought back many minor characters that we came across in the main storyline. Most notably, and perhaps most surprisingly, was the tertiary character we met once at the very beginning of the story, the man whom we'd only known as the Merchant of Mirrors. He had helped Geralt get on the proper track and find Yennefer. Afterwards, the character disappears from the game until the beginning of the DLC. Following the disastrous completion of an odd contract, Geralt is placed under arrest for having unknowingly killed the Ulfiri Crown Prince. After waking up on an Ulfiri ship, Geralt is suddenly and mysteriously approached by the Master Mirror. Following this, Geralt meets with the mysterious man at a crossroads, where Odim explains to him the service required to remove his mark. I knew you'd come. Over the course of the story, we start to peel back some layers as to Odim's true nature, though nothing is explicitly confirmed. 
There is some speculation that he is a deity and or the devil incarnate. In terms of the The Witcher universe, it is likely that he is a pre-conjunction relic if he comes from the world of The Witcher at all, or simply an interdimensional being from another world. Whatever he is, he is certainly extremely powerful. He does evoke the trickster type deity like Loki. Some bloggers have gone as far as to suggest that Odin is the Nyarlathotep of the The Witcher universe. Also known as the Crawling Chaos, Nyarlathotep is from the Shtulu Mythos and is known as a trickster deity who loves to meddle in human beings' fates. Sound familiar? All these things are also very evocative of the ancient Greek god Hades or even the Maleficent Ursula in The Little Mermaid. In any case, there are multiple sinister characters in mythology, legends, and various other stories that make humans sign their future and or their soul away. Gonto Dim certainly settles himself comfortably among them. That's it for today's episode. Join us next time where I discuss the influences of the tattoos in the The Witcher universe and what will be the final episode for this season. As always, be the change you want to see in the world, keep each other in love and respect, and I'll see you all next time.